Hey, down here in New York at State Unity Live. Phil, how's my one-time fishing pal? Slowly but surely going nuts with this business. All set to open the trout season? Not a chance. I am. Sunrise on opening day is going to find me out in the middle of a stream, gently dropping flies in front of ravenous rainbows. Yeah, And you know I where know. I plan to do it? Yep. Oh? The point is, do you? Well, of course I do. I On a private that. stream only half an hour's drive from here is the clearest, coldest... What was that? Yeah, you see, I was right. Right about what? You're not knowing where you're going on opening day. What are you talking about? Didn't you hear me? Oh, I heard all right, but you're wrong. Oh, I am, hmm? Sure. Because, Johnny, you're going to do your trout fishing on the Esopus River. Down there in New York State? That's right, near the little town of Mount Tremper. Who says? It's just west of Kingston, the other side of Ashokan Reservoir, about halfway between... Oh, I know where it is, and I've taken some nice, fat, native browns out of the Esopus, and I love it dearly. But what makes you think that's where I'm going to open the season? Well, after all, if we're going to pay your expense account... Oh, you are? Yeah, and for once, you won't have to hold back on it. Hmm, well, that's a little different. I kind of thought you'd see it that way. Tell me all. Come on down here to New York, and I will. I'm on my way. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to State Unity Life Insurance Company, New York City office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Blue Rock matter. After carefully packing all my trout fishing gear and clothing to go with, including waders and a set of long johns, expense account item one is five seventy-five taxi fare to Bradley Field. Item two, ten dollars and twelve cents plane fare to New York. Item three, six twenty cab fare into Phil's office at five hundred Fifth Avenue. Sure, sure, Johnny. And I know that old saying just as well as you do. The time that a man spends in fishing is, is not, not deducted, deducted from, from his, his lifespan. Life right. Right. But I just haven't had the time these last couple of years. Well, why don't you unchain yourself from this desk and join me there on the Asopas? Nope, I'm afraid it's no go. Why not? I wouldn't dare show my face up there where you're going. Why not? Because the man I want you to keep an eye on knows me. Oh, who might that be? Thomas Gerald Aspinwall. And who's he? A man who would stop at absolutely nothing to get his paws on the Emery Archibald fortune. Archibald? Big stockbroker? The same. I thought he was dead. He will be within a matter of weeks. One of those incurable things. Oh, or where does this Tom Aspenwald come in? He was married for a while to Nancy Archibald, Emery's daughter, and last of the line, except for little Barry. Who's Barry? Barry Aspenwald, Nancy's five-year-old son. By Tom Aspenwald? Hey, no. Now, in spite of the last name, he's by an earlier husband who died about the time little Barry was born. I see. Go on. Now, in his original will, the old man left half to Nancy, half to Tom. Mm-hmm. But in a brand new will, that's all changed. When old man Archibald goes, and that could be most any day now, the whole of his estate, including nearly a million of insurance, gets divided 50-50 between Nancy and the boy. I see. And Tom doesn't like that. Unless, Johnny. Yeah? Unless the youngster dies before the old man does. In which case, his share goes to Tom Aspenwald, as in the earlier will. Ah. Uh -huh. Don't ask me why, but that's the way it is. In any event, Tom would like nothing better than to see the youngster out of the way. Right. Before the old man dies. And that's why I suddenly got worried when I learned that Tom's taking the child away for a few days. Do you think he'd try to kill him, his own stepson? I think he would. Hmm. All right. Now, what's all this have to do with my opening the trout season on the Esopus? Or was that just a gag to get me down here? Oh, no, not a bit of it. Now, I've uh, made a reservation for you up there at Mount Tremper at the farmhouse of Mr. and Mrs. Fritz Hornblock. It's only a couple of hundred yards from the big pool below the bridge over the Esopus. Blue Rock Pool? Yes. Where I've wet many a line, Phil. Oh, uh -huh. but not many people fish that spot anymore. Because unless you know every inch of it, and with the high, roily water this time of year especially, it's about as dangerous a place as there is. Right. So, when I tell you that the only other guests the Hornblocks will have for opening day... Tommy Aspenwald and the boy? Yes. Wow. If there's one place on that river to fake an accident and make it look legitimate, 
That's it. Yes. You, uh, like to run on up there and keep an eye on things? Maybe prevent a murder? What do you think? Expense account item four is $28 even. Includes cocktails and dinner, a movie, a soft bed at the Lexington, and breakfast the next morning. After which I spent item five. Two seventy-five for a three-day non-resident fishing license. Item six, the usual $50 deposit on a rental car. I drove north on Route 9, crossed the Hudson at Poughkeepsie, north on 9W to Kingston, then west around the Shokin Reservoir to Mount Tremper. By the time I got to the Hornblock Farm, it was late afternoon, and the weather had turned very windy and very cold. Ah, ah now you, you think I'm too old to carry these packages of yours, Mr. Tarr? Well, no, but let me carry some of the fishing gear at least. Nein, 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 I'm strong as an ox. Uh, are there any other guests, Mr. Hornblock? Uh, here now, uh, right in here, okay? Oh, looks fine to me. Good. A nice warm feather bed for you, and if you like it, I built you a nice big fire here in the fire. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Or oh, maybe while the mama is out, you like maybe a little schnapps <laughs> <laughs> to keep the cold away. Well, now, it just happens, Mr. Hornblock, that I brought a bottle along with me. Oh. You know, um, just in case of snake bite. Oh, snake bite this time of year. Oh. <laughs> what kind? Well, if, um... Eight-year-old scotch doesn't offend your finer sensibilities. Well, uh, why don't we see? Why don't we? There you are. To your heart's content. Ah, now let me see. Well, 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 what's going on here? <laughs> well, hey, just what are you up to, Fritz? Uh, uh, oh, that was good, Mr. Dahl. Oh, good. Uh, will you join us? Oh, with that cold wind coming up out there, maybe I'd better. Uh, my name is Tom Aspen. Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Aspen, Walt. This is Johnny Dollar. Hi, Tom. Yeah, well, hi. Dollar, did you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds vaguely familiar. Well, I don't know why it should. I'm just a fisherman up here for the opening. Yeah, uh, yeah, so is Mr. Aspen, Walt. Him and his little boy, that cute little Perry. Oh, your son, Tom? A stepson. I figure if a youngster learns to fish at that age, he'll be forever grateful for sure, it. Sure, sure he should. Even I might learn sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, where is he, Tom? Uh, my wife, she took him in to do the shopping in the village. Uh, yeah. And she promised to buy some more rocks for him. Rocks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's crazy about those little hard candy, sugar candies, red and blue and yellow kind. Yeah, rocks, he calls them. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I hope she doesn't give him too many, though. Make him sick. Oh, so isn't the little boy entitled now and again? Eh? Uh, even if it gives him a terrible stomach ache sometimes? Ah, uh, for a little boy, it, it always passes away. Mm -hmm. Except last time, I thought the poor kid was going to die. Line, line. You just let him lie still for a while on the bed, and he'll be all okay again. No matter how sick he thinks he is. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you're right, but... Well, this time I've brought him up here to learn to fish, not to lie around with a stomach ache because of the way you and your wife spoil it. Ah, now, Mr. Aspenwald. And, uh, didn't you say there isn't a doctor this side of Kingston? No, no, we take care of him. Now, don't you worry about him. You going out first thing in the morning, Tom? Yeah, I certainly am. Uh, uh, Johnny, did you say? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, uh, missed an opening day in years. Where do you plan to fish? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere along the river. You? I'm not sure yet. Well, uh, I will tell you, boss. Yes, Fritz? You know where is the big hole below the bridge? Oh, you mean where the blue rock is? Yeah, sure. Oh, of course. It's an ideal spot. And nobody else will be fishing there. Right, that's for me. Uh, only one thing, though, Mr. Ashtonwalt. Yeah? Uh, I won't let you take that little boy there. Oh, why not? It's too dangerous, all those slippery rocks. Oh, now, look. And with all that ice on them in the early mornings, nine. Well, with me alone. Well, uh, maybe later in the day after it gets warm. <laughs> okay, okay, Fritz. We'll see. Now, you don't take him there. Okay, Fritz. Hey, now, wait a minute. 
Yeah. If that's such a hot spot. Uh, sure it is. Well, Tom, why don't you and I hit it at the crack of dawn? <laughs> well, now, uh, just wait a minute, John. Sure. That's a good idea. Sure. What difference would it make to a youngster of five? Well, it's simply that I promised him. I mean, a place where he'd be sure to get some fish. What's more, it'll be a lot warmer later in the day. Of course. And after, we, after you've caught your limit, <laughs> we hope. You'll feel a lot more like taking the time to teach him. Yeah, yeah. You you leave him with us in the morning. Uh, now he listen. Can you can play too, around I... this place the way he likes to. Does he really care about fishing at that age? Well, he will once I've shown him how. Well, he'll enjoy learning a lot more if he's warm and comfortable. Uh, I suppose you know all about kids. No, not very much. But if he does enjoy playing around the farm the way Fritz says he does... Sure, sure. That's what he really likes. And uh, you want the truth, Tom? Truth. Well, apparently you're the expert around these parts. I'm not. So I'll use whatever arguments I can to make you help me get a limit tomorrow morning. <laughs> Johnny, now... And don't you think that would be the sporting thing for him to do, Fritz? Sure, sure it would. All right, then it's all set. You and I open the season with a bang at this hot spot of yours. Then later, when it's warm and the rocks are dry, we can both take Barry out and teach him how. <laughs> well, thanks, but I prefer to teach him myself. Okay, okay. Um... Would you care for a little snort out of this jug? Yeah, 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 yeah uh, sure. No, thanks. I've uh, got to run over to Kingston to pick up some dry flies I forgot to bring along. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's much, much better. Yes, um, yes, I think so, too. Say, more trout flies, did he say? That's funny. Is it? You should see what he bought. Every fly that was ever made. Well, uh, more to the point, Fritz. Yeah? Purist, though he may be, and I like to think I'm one, too. Doesn't he know that dry flies would be ridiculous this time of the year? Sure. Sure he does. Some wet flies or nymphs or streamers, maybe, or even when you come to being practical about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the nice fat worms that I have already for you, eh? <laughs> and he knows that's the way to fish this water at this time of year, as well as you do, if you want to catch the fishes. But there he goes. Yeah. Oh, and look, from the window... Here comes Mama back with the little boy. It was obvious from the way he spoke of him that Barry wasn't overly fond of his stepfather. But he was a cute little tyke, and I didn't blame Mrs. Hornblock, a sweet, typical housefrau, for wanting to spoil him just a little. <laughs> a little? Judging by the size of the sack of hard candies he clutched in his hand... Blue rocks, he called them. She was doing a pretty good job of it. The kind he likes the very best, his stepfather says. There was something, something about those candies, though, that vaguely, vaguely reminded me of... I wondered. Yeah, yeah, and the blue ones, what? those are his favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any kind that's blue, he loves it. <laughs> Fritz, where's the stepfather? Uh, just to Kingston to make a nail. Uh, uh, tell me, Barry. Uh-huh? You looking forward to fishing tomorrow? Oh, I'd rather stay here and play with the pigs and chickens. <laughs> sure you would. Yeah. I'll eat rocks. <laughs> you want one, mister? No, thanks. Now, come, Leachin. You must wash off all the sticky. Uh -huh. uh, so much happier the boy is with the pigs and chickens. But he's bound. He teach him how to fish. And so he will. Will he? Huh? I wonder. It was only too obvious how Aspenwald planned to get rid of Barry. And I made up my mind to be among those present whenever he headed for the river with the youngster in tow. But you know something? That turned out to be a nearly fatal mistake for two people. Pardon me, mister. She said... Do you have a match? The old gag. 
Sure, I said. Do you have a cigarette? She had one. Newport. Newport filters cigarettes. We lit up. Some smoke. Finest, rich tobacco flavor I'd ever tasted. Real tobacco. The way I like them. The right touch of menthol and just a hint of mint. A great combination. She suggested. Makes Newport more refreshing to begin with. More refreshing all the way. She wasn't kidding. Been smoking them ever since. Newport's. Newport filters cigarettes. Aspenwald returned from Kingston, decked out in a new fishing jacket. And judging by the way one of his pockets bulged, he'd added to his collection of flies and lures. During the meal, his annoyance, a couple of hours earlier, seemed to have disappeared. You must really like the new coat, Mr. Aspenwald, wearing it to the table, huh? <laughs> Would you like some more yes. pig's knuckles? Oh, no, thanks. No, I, I just want to make sure it's broken in, Mrs. Hornbach, before Johnny and I hit the river in the morning. Oh. That's a good-looking jacket, Tom. I like those bellows pockets. Yeah, they're nice and roomy. Mm -hmm. Looks like you bought a pocket full of new lures, too. Oh, nothing of any consequence. Uh, Mama, please, uh, some more sour cup. Yeah, here you are, Papa. Uh, and did you buy me some more rocks? <laughs> now, Barry, don't you think these folks gave you enough of that hard candy? Oh, no. Well, it seems to me that everywhere I turn, there's some of it lying around waiting for you to find it. I know, and I look for it. And every time I get a stomach ache, too. <laughs> you sure do. Well, I don't care. No, of course you don't. <laughs> and, and he always gets old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're still set for the crack of dawn, aren't you, Johnny? I sure am. Uh, but just the two of you. Why, sure, Fritz. Just the two. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Barry, while we're gone, you can uh, fool around the barnyard. Go on. Can I have my dessert now? Yeah, yeah, in a minute. Uh, Papa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you go to the village in the morning, you'll buy my, my little boy some more blue candy. More oh, blue candy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 there isn't enough of it around here. No. Oh, and I must take some butter over to Mrs. Hilga after breakfast. And and I'll stay here and watch your chickens. That's right. You'll leave him alone? Oh, just for a little while. He will be all right. Sure. If you say so. Oh, by the way, Tom, I'm guaranteeing that we'll bring in the limit tomorrow. Uh, you mean if we're lucky? Oh, luck won't even enter into it. Oh, no? No. Papa Hornblocks promised me a secret weapon. <laughs> Haven't you, Papa? Yeah, yeah, that's it. A secret weapon. Uh, like what? You just wait. I'll show you tomorrow morning after you're through beating the river to a froth with no results. <laughs> temperature was in the mid-twenties, but after fortifying ourselves with uh, pork chops, hotcakes and bacon, three fried eggs apiece, and plenty of steaming hot coffee, Tom and I set out for the river, leaving the horn blocks to their errands, and little Barry to play around the farmyard. We crossed the bridge, then worked our way down to the Blue Rock Pool. Fritz had been right. There was a slick coating of ice on all the rocks and ledges. And, uh, incidentally, I noticed the pocket of Tom's jacket wasn't bulging the way it had the night before. And I meant to ask him about it. I wish I had. But having given up on lures, I'd resorted to Papa Hornblock's secret weapon, a can of fat, sassy earthworms. Then... Precariously perched on a slippery rock, I tied into the first trout of the season. Yo ho! Hey, good boy, Johnny. Looks like you've got one. Oh, I sure have. This one's a dilly. Well, and here I come for some of that secret weapon. Just watch your footing, Tom. Oh, don't worry. My hand's free. I can hang onto bushes along the side. There he goes again. 
Oh, he's a good one. Yeah. Johnny Dollar, huh? What? You think I didn't know why you came up here? Man, wait a minute. Oh, look at him go. Yeah. Yeah, well, look at you. Go. Hey. <laughs> Things happened fast, as Tom, holding onto a bush, gave me the shoulder. My feet went out from under me on the icy rock, and I fell sideways into that treacherous, frigid pool. But in twisting around, I grabbed at one of his legs and managed to hang on, and then the two of us went in. From then on, all I can say is that it's a miracle we ever got out of that freezing, rushing torrent alive. But somehow we did. Then up on the bank, the water on our clothing freezing into ice... All right. All right, Dollar. So you think you won, huh? Just because you got me. And you did bring that youngster up here to kill him. You bet I did. All right. Come on now. Back to the house before we freeze to death. And we'll make sure that Barry's still okay. Johnny, Dollar, it's no use. Because you gave yourself away. What? You knew that he was only five. You said so before you even saw him. So I knew you were on something when you came here. All right, so I goofed. Now, come on. Uh, I remembered who you are, and I knew you wouldn't let me get him down to the river alone. So that's why I made other plans. You what? Now, wait a minute. That pocket on your jacket. Yeah, that's right, Dolly. From the wetting, there's a blue-green stain all over it. Huh? Blue vitriol, <laughs> copper sulfate that you bought in Kingston. Oh, so you're smart now, huh? And the little chunks of blue vitriol <laughs> look just like the chunks of the hard candy that that kid likes. Yeah, and they both have a kind of sour taste. <laughs> you see? Yes, I see. <laughs> Come on. Ah, no, it's too late, Dollar. <laughs> because I left enough of that stuff around for him to find a kill him ten times over. Right, Come on. <laughs> When he sees it, he'll think the hard box left it for him. And even if they're there, you think they'll worry over his stomach ache before it kills him? Barry! <laughs> Barry! Barry! Ah, you're too late, Dolly. You're too late. Barry! So, maybe you caught me. But at least that lousy kid will never get the money. <laughs> Barry! Barry! big dramatic ending? Oh, I'm sorry. Not this time. Thanks to the fact that Mrs. Hornblock had changed her mind and had taken Barry along on her morning errand. By the time they got back, I'd cleaned up every chunk of the blue vitriol that Aspenwalt had planted. Mostly around the chicken coop. So the only casualty? Aspenwalt who'd nearly frozen to death in his wet clothes on the frozen ground where I'd knocked him out. And he was a very docile prisoner when I handed him in at the Kingston Hooskow. Expense account total, including a bit extra for the horn blocks. Oh, call it 200 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a lesson in how to crack a safe. And I'm perfectly serious about that. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were William Mason as Tom Aspenwald, Carl Weber as Phil Taylor, Louis Van Ruten as Fritz Hornblock, 
Bryna Rayburn as Mrs. Hornblock, and Sarah Fussell as Barry. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hanna speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.